Hi, in this episode of Confluence series, we are going to talk about how to create and customize tables in Confluence. Let us go ahead and understand how to add a table to the page. There are different ways to add a table to the page. You can select the table icon on the editor panel of the page and go ahead and add a table or you can use Shift plus Alt plus T shortcut key to add a table or alternatively, you can even use the insert elements option wherein you would find the table macro to add the table to the page. So you can say plus and you find the macro table and insert the macro over here. To add a new row or column, you can select any of the cell and click on the cell options or shift plus F10 as a shortcut key and click on the arrow mark and say add column right. Alternatively, you can even use the plus icon of insert column option to add a newer column to the table. If you would like to add new row, you can again select the cells cell options and say add row below. Alternatively, you can use the insert row option and add a newer row to the table. Now let us understand how to delete a row or column of the table. You can again select the cell options to go ahead and say delete column or you could delete a row by selecting the cell options once again. So this is how you can delete any rows or columns of the table. You can go ahead and also add background color to the table by clicking on the cell options and selecting the background color. If you would like to add the color to an individual cell, you could go ahead and select just the individual cell and say cell options, background color and select the color that you would like to add to the cell. If you would like to add color to the to an entire set of cells or rows and columns, a combination of rows and columns, you can select the entire range of columns and click on the cell options and say background color and select the color that you would like to add. So this is how you can go ahead and add background color to a single cell or a set of or a group of cells on the table. Now let us understand how to merge and split cells. If you'd like to merge two cells of a table, select the two cells on which you would like to perform the merge action and click on the cell options and say merge cells. If now, if you would like to split the cells into two different cells, then you can click on the cell option of the same merged cell and you can say split cell that is going to bring them back to the original form of being two different cells. Now let us explore the table options of the table. So for, for us to go ahead and explore that, let's give some header items to the table. I can say work item to be the initial header, status, assignee, due date. Now let us go ahead and explore table options here. When you click on any of the cell, you should be able to see table options. So once you select table options, you can go ahead and make the header as a row by selecting header row. Or if you would like to make the column as a header, you can say header as a column. Uh, if you, you can even remove the row as a header by clicking, unchecking that one, right? So going back table options you can even give numbers to your column by saying numbered column okay? have one two three four numbers appearing for the table now so i'm going to make the header as a row back again and i'm going to remove the column as the header okay you see there's a grade uh, the, all the header is currently great so that is how you can use the table options there's an option called distribute columns. This is used whenever you have different sizes of columns. When you select distribute columns, it is going to make all these columns in the same size. For example, if you say 
status width of the column is different from what we see for the assignee. And I can even make this bigger and let this make this smaller. When I select the distribute columns option, it is going to make all these columns of equal widths so that it would look visually good. So I can say distribute columns. And if you see, now it quickly transformed all these columns into equal sizes. And that is what distribute columns is used for. You can go ahead and delete a table by clicking on the remove option that is going to entirely delete the table from the page. You can even make a copy of the table by clicking on the copy option. Let's go ahead and enter a few details here. For example, I would say work item 1, work item 2, work item 3. Now you can go ahead and move the columns or the rows, like swap the order of these rows or columns. For example, um, I can hover here on the work item one row. And once I select the cell over here or the row here, I would be able to see this option uh, with a hand icon to go ahead and move the row to the second position. You see here the work item 2 moved to the top to the row number 1 whereas the work item 2 moved to row number 2. Now I can move this more by hovering there again and moving it to the lower position. Now if I'd like to move this to the top I would go and directly move this to the top. So I'm hovering on the row with the hand icon until this button appears for me. I can do the same to the columns here. So I can go ahead and hover over here and I can move this column here. Right? In the same way, probably I want to move assign it to the third position. I would say like this or back to the original position. This is how you're swapping the positions of the rows and the columns or moving them forth and back. You can even add additional macros into the table by using the insert elements option or you could even say slash and add any macro that you would want. Um, conference gives you that flexibility. So you could say, I want to add a status macro over here. So I'm going to say slash status, add a custom status label, so I'm going to say to do. I'm going to say status in progress. I'm going to say status done. In the same way, you can also mention a person by using at the rate symbol. So you can say at the rate. You can give an, uh, you can even give a due date to the column under due date. You can say slash date due date date date. So this is how you can add additional macros uh, to the column. You can even add like images, emojis, or an action item macro. Uh, you can change the colors. You know, you can even change the font of these texts as needed using the options in the editor panel. You can even go ahead and sort the columns uh, if they are based on numbers. So I would say here, your due date is based upon certain numbers over here. And you can go ahead and sort the column here by clicking on the column and selecting this option hovering over the option over here the square option with the hand icon and you can see right click or just select it you should be able to see sort by increasing order sort by decreasing so sort increasing or sort decreasing 24 came to the top 3 went to the top again sort increasing sort decreasing Right. This is how you can go ahead and 
do the sorting of the columns on the table, right? So from having an empty table to creating some table with some visually good information, um, you can use a lot of macros, uh, you can add additional rows, columns to the table, and Confluence provides them absolute flexibility. Watch out for more videos, stay tuned, do like, share, and subscribe to my channel, Tech Monday.